The first step in the statistical investigative cycle is to collect data. In this video, I'll describe several methods you could use to collect data. We'll start with a research question. Let's say you want to find out how many people, on average, live in the households in your city. And here is a view of your city. Let's zoom in just a bit to get a better sense of what the city looks like. So your first idea might be to visit every household and count the number of people who live there. This is called a census. A census is where you survey all the members of the population. In this scenario, all of the households. This method will produce perfect data, but actually surveying all of the households would take more time and resources than you have available. So what else can you do? So maybe you could step outside your house and you see a bunch of people walking by. So you ask each of them, how many people live in your household? But before they can answer, you notice something. They all look a lot like you. And the number of people they live with will probably be similar to you and to each other. This method is called a convenience sample, where you survey people who are conveniently located. This has the benefit of being fast and easy, but the results you get will typically be not so representative of the overall population. So you should generally avoid using a convenient sample. Now, you want to collect data from a sample, so you don't have to survey the entire population. But not any old sample will do. Your goal is to get a representative sample. That is, a sample where the relevant characteristics of the members of the sample mirror the characteristics in the overall population. Let's think of some ways to get such a sample. Let's take another look at the city from overhead. Now, the ideal method for generating a representative sample is called a simple random sample. This is where each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected to be in the sample. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see this in action. So what we need to do is assign a number to each household. And then we'd use a random number generator, like this one from random.org. You'd enter the number of households you'd like to survey and the total number of households in the city, and you'd get a list of randomly selected numbers. Then you would visit those randomly selected households and ask how many people lived there. This method would produce a representative sample, but it could be a lot of work to generate the list and to visit all of the households. Also, this method only works if you have access to a list of all of the members of the population. So let's take a look at a couple of other methods that are a little more practical. One method is a systematic sample. This is where you put all of the members of the population in order and survey every nth member of the population. For example, we could come up with a route through all of the streets in the city, and we could select every 10th household we walked by. This should produce a sample that is as representative as the simple random sample, but it doesn't necessarily require that you start with a list of the entire population. However, it does require that your population is in some sort of order. In this example, we needed to have a path that traversed all of the streets of the city, but not every scenario has a built-in order to it like this. Let's look at another sampling method. Let's say that you knew that a particular section of your city had a good mix of households that matched the overall demographics of the city in terms of things that might affect household size, like income, education level, race, and religion. Then you could do a cluster sample, which is where you survey all of the households in this representative cluster or group. This method can be more efficient in terms of time and resources, but it requires that you know that the cluster is representative of the entire population. Let's look at one last method. Stratified sampling is where you divide the population into subgroups based on relevant characteristics. For example, it might be the case that a household's size is linked to its income and religion. And let's say you have some information about the overall distribution of income and the proportion of adherence to various religions within the city. Then you can use any other sampling method, and as you survey participants, you start excluding people from the survey based on these distributions. For example, if you survey two households that are at the high income level, and then if you encounter a third high income household, you might exclude them from your survey so that the proportions in your sample match the proportions in the population. Now, let's summarize what we've seen here. We've been thinking about sampling methods. We looked at the census, the simple random sample, 
the systematic sample, the cluster sample, and stratified sampling methods. Each method has its own strengths and potential issues. And of course, you're not limited to just using one of these. It is common to combine multiple methods into a multi-level sample. For example, selecting a cluster and then systematically surveying every fifth household within the cluster. The key goal with all of these methods is to generate a sample that accurately represents the population, which lets you make an accurate inference about the population.